Hey Otakus, we're back with a brand new show. Today, we drop in with our kawaii princess, Katie Smile, and she's gonna give us the lowdown on J-pop star, Kiati Pamyo Pamyo. We also get to tag along to an awesome cosplay shoot with photographer, Neil Creek. And go visit our mate, Perry, at Chaos Anime, as he shows us what's hot in the world of figures, figmas, and nendroids. But for now, let's head back to the streets of Kanazawa, where we see how the locals celebrate New Year's Eve, Japanese style. <laughs> New Year is the most important holiday in Japan. Most businesses shut down from the 1st to the 3rd of January and many people return to their hometowns to celebrate New Year's Eve with their families. There are many New Year's traditions that capture Shinto, Buddhist and Japanese pop culture. New Year's Eve in Japan is the time to clean your home and your workplace. Send special New Year's cards featuring Chinese zodiac animals to your friends. Make mochi, which is pounded from rice. Hang or decorate your home or office with lucky talismans, like the lucky cat. Eat soba noodles to symbolise a long life. Visit a shrine. Watch Kohaku Utagasen, a very popular TV show featuring J-pop and Enka singers with spectacular performances. And celebrate with your family by having a year forgetting party and playing traditional games like Japanese badminton. And finally, one of the most beautiful places to be on New Year's Eve is one of the local shrines at midnight when the temple bell is rung repeatedly. Okay, New Year's Eve seems to be a real family day in Japan. It sure is different from Christmas, isn't it? Yep. Christmas seems to be more about a couple's day, whereas New Year's Eve really brings the family together. I just like all the cute outfits. And speaking of outfits, I know you're excited about our next segment, Nicole. Oh my god, she's so cute. Just love her style. It's Katie Smile with Drop the Kawaii. <laughs> Kiriko Takemura was born on the 29th of January 1993. She was born in Tokyo, Japan, but is better known by her stage name, Caroline Charimplop, Kari Pamyo Pamyo. Kari began her career as an everyday Japanese fashion blogger. She would venture out in the streets of Harajuku in the obscure fashions, despite her parents' disapproval. One day, she was street snapped by a fashion magazine, Kara, and that's where she began her fashion career. She then began modeling for Zippa and Kara, and many other Japanese fashion magazines. After beginning her modelling career, Carrie started collaborating with Japanese brands. She collaborated with Japanese cosmetics brand iMazing to produce a set of eyelashes called Harajuku Doll. Carrie even collaborated with Sebastian Masuda, creator of 6% Doki Doki. Carrie was then discovered on Nico Nico Doga singing by the brands behind Capsule and Perfume, Yosutaka Nakara. In 2011, Carrie released her breakthrough song slash music video, Pon Pon Pon. After the release of Pon Pon Pon, Carrie not only gained success in Japan majorly, but also around the world. After releasing Pon Pon Pon, she released her first album, Mushi Mushi Harajuku. Carrie has now released seven singles, three albums, and one concert DVD. Carrie has also released her own books, such as Carrie Bon and Oh My God, Harajuku Girl. Yay! She also collaborated with TV show Space Shower Arena to release Mushi Mushi Tokyo, a guidebook to Tokyo. Singles Carrie has now released include Pom Pom Pom, Tukematsukaru, Candy Candy, Fashion Monster, Fruit Sedition, Ninja Di Bang Bang, Invader Invader, and Multi Nightland. She is soon to release her eighth single, Slow Mo. In 2013, Carrie embarked on her first worldwide tour. She visited the United States, Paris, and even London. Unfortunately, Carrie did not come to Australia, but there is hope for us yet. For information on Carrie's upcoming tour, visit japandemand.com. This is Katie Smile, dropping the kawaii. See you next time. How cool was that, Nickel? It's kawaii and informative. Next we have Neil Creek, who's a well-respected photographer in the cosplay community. We got lucky enough to tag along on one of his recent photo shoots. We're here today with Neil Creek, a Melbourne-based photographer who is well known for his cosplay photo shoots. Neil, thank you so much for your time today. Oh, thank you very much for having me. It's great to be here. 
How did you get into photography? Really, it's been the last 10 years that I've taken photography seriously as a hobby, where it's been my, my main interest. Um, so yeah, since about early 2004, so I guess it's 10 years anniversary now. So Happy cool. anniversary! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, how do you think you became the go-to cosplay photographer in Melbourne? Oh, look, I don't know if I'd say I'm the go-to cosplay photographer. You're definitely out there. Uh, there are a lot of go-to cosplay photographers, some really talented people, some really good friends of mine. Um, and honestly, I think it's different photographers and different models like working together. So, rather than people coming to me, I've got a few friends that I work with quite, a, quite often and a few people come up and ask me to shoot sometimes. And, nice to make new friends but uh, yeah we've all got different people that we work with and, and so many talented photographers in Melbourne it's brilliant. I guess chemistry is very important with photography and I guess especially cosplay trying to create the dynamic Absolutely, that you're after. Yeah. And connecting with the subject. The chemistry is so important it's about understanding the subject's um, frame of mind about understanding the, the character themselves and how they how they work together and uh, trying to create uh, an atmosphere in the shoot that is appropriate to the, the series to the character and is getting what the, the cosplayer wants out of the shoot as well. Because I mean, as a professional photographer, I'm always trying to get what the client wants to work out what they want. And understanding what the cosplayer wants from the shoot is an important part of that. Um, out of everything that you photograph, like what would be your preferred or your favorite genre? Oh, well, cosplay is a real favorite of mine. I just, I love working with cosplayers. because <laughs> <laughs> Cosplayers are fantastic. They're, they're enthusiastic, they're energetic, they're creative. Um, they're always interested in, in pushing the boundaries, you know, trying new ideas. Uh, if I've got a crazy idea, they're more than, usually more than willing to give it a shot. Uh, outside of cosplay, I really love landscape photography. Uh, it's something that I don't have uh, enough opportunity to do something about, but I really want to try and change that. Um, so yeah, those, those are probably the, the two big ones that I, I really enjoy the most. Now, um, how do you find you know all these really great locations you know to shoot? And I guess do you have any uh, you know preferred places? Um, so when I'm looking for a location for a particular shoot, I look at my archive and see where I've shot before and see if anything that I've worked with before will suit that. Uh, I often use Google Maps and Street View to actually just sort of scroll around and see if there's any places that look good. Uh, like a shoot I did just last week, uh, I found somewhere just by looking at Street View, seeing some great graffiti on the wall and thinking we'll try there. Um, also, doing uh, searches on Google Images for a place name or a type of shoot often brings up interesting uh, locations in Australia if you're searching for a name or if you're searching for a kind of shoot, like if say for example, today we did a horror shoot from uh, Spice and Wolf. If you look for cosplay shoots that have done that before that particular subject, you can see what locations they used and then think, ah, oh, do we have anything like that locally? So there's lots of different ways to look for a location and not one of them is the best. You just sort of got to be flexible. So, have you had any memorable photo shoots? It can be cosplay or otherwise, <laughs> we just want to hear all the juicy details. Um, my probably most memorable cosplay shoot was only done uh, late last year, and it was actually with a couple of great friends of mine, Rosemary and Mai. And uh, Rosemary was, sorry, Mai was wanting to do a photo shoot of Yoko from Gulden Lagen, which is set in the desert. And I was thinking to myself, where on earth do you find a desert in Victoria? I didn't know so, there was one. Yeah, I, <laughs> Technically there isn't unless you go way out the, the corners. But um, So I, I got out Google Earth and I scrolled around looking in the, in the area and I found this big white patch and I thought, okay, what's that? Zoomed in, had a look. The images that pop up in Google Earth when you've got the nearby images turned on, they showed pictures of sand dunes. And I thought, this is perfect. Uh, and it actually turns out that my sister has actually just finished building a holiday house within 20 minutes drive of that location. Oh. So. Convenient! <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, Rosie, May and I went down there with uh, you know, a couple of friends to, for the weekend and um, the location was just absolutely incredible. It was breathtaking. It was a very hard walk to get in because there's lots of up and downs on dunes and dunes are hard to walk on, they're quite steep. But once you got there, you just sort of came over that last ridge and out there in front of you was the most incredible horizon. No. It was exactly like that. It was exactly like that. It was probably one of the most remarkable locations I've ever shot on anywhere in Australia. Um, it just blew us away. There was sand everywhere. It was just forever. Who would you say is your favourite cosplayer to shoot? Oh, I, I can't answer gonna that. going to make you choose. <laughs> It, it, it's something that I, it's, I usually keep to myself and it's something that changes over time. So uh, I've had a few favourites that I've worked with in the past. Uh, at the moment I'm really loving working with uh, Rosemary and May as I've mentioned before. They are awesome, look them up. Yes, definitely. Um, I've also uh, enjoyed working in the past with Siami. Uh, she's, uh, she's still good friends but we haven't had as many shoots lately. Um, 
Oh, look, it's just too hard to pick a few favourites. There's just so many amazing and wonderful cosplayers out there. It's very true. They're all beautiful and gorgeous and we love them all. <laughs> and that just about wraps us up with the interview with Neil Creek today. Thank you, Neil. It's been a pleasure. My pleasure. It's been a great deal of fun meeting you guys and uh, getting involved with the, the shoot. It's fun to see things uh, on the other side too with the videography following us around. I would say exactly the same thing. As a cosplayer, it's nice to see what goes on you know, on the other side of the camera. Not yelled at in this case. He, <laughs> asks, he doesn't yell. That was awesome. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, we thanks look forward heaps. to seeing everything in the future. Thank you very much. Very much. Definitely. <laughs> Now it's time to check in with Steph to see what she's broken down this week in Game Declassified. This time around, she takes a look at the recent announcement of Hyrule Warriors with a dash of Dynasty Warriors thrown in. <laughs> Hyrule Warriors, or Zelda Muso, is an upcoming game for the Nintendo Wii U. It combines the action of the Tecmo Koei Warriors series with the world of the Legend of Zelda series. While there will be a far stronger emphasis on combat than in other games of the Legend of Zelda series, players will still use common weapons from prior games and many of Link's signature moves appear, such as the spin attack. But for those of you who are new to either of the series, I've prepared a little intro for each. Dynasty Warriors is a series of hack and slash action games that draws inspiration from the historical fiction Romance of the Three Kingdoms, which entails the epic struggle of power between the kingdoms in ancient China. The series is a fusion of real-time strategy and action, and its appeal is allowing the player to be a one-man army versus the thousands of enemies and generals the game pits you against. The games boast a large roster of playable characters, and the most recent instalment, Dynasty Warriors 8, has over 70 playable characters to choose from. The Legend of Zelda is a series of games that takes place in the Kingdom of Hyrule. The protagonist of the series is Link, a man who is destined, in most of the games, to save Hyrule from the clutches of the evil Ganondorf. Some of the games feature additional protagonists, such as Navi the Fairy, who serves as a sidekick throughout the course of the games or different antagonists such as Vati the Wind Mage or Usurper King Zant. The story commonly involves a relic known as the Triforce, a set of three omnipotent golden triangles. The protagonist in each game is usually not the same incarnation of Link, but a few exceptions do exist. To keep up to date with the latest news on Hyrule Warriors, check japandaman.com. And until next time, this is Steph with Game Declassified. <laughs> So we're here today with Perry from Chaos Anime, who'll be showing us the latest figures that they have for sale on their website. Perry, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Japan Man. No worries, man. So what have you got for us today? Today I'm going to be showing you Insane Black Rock Shooter. Awesome. And one of the newest strike witches that's out, that's Sonya V. Latvia. Ooh, awesome. Let's have a look. Yeah. First, this isn't a wedding cake, but it's the box that Black Rock Shooter comes in. It's pretty damn big. It's a but, very big box. Yeah, I like to show it because everybody's very impressed by just the box. So we'll go from the box to the actual figure. Sure. So if you don't mind putting that down for me. Sure. This is what's inside that big cake box. Great. Um, this is a 1 8 scale figure by Good Smile Company. Um, she comes with her big cannon lance and her blade claw. Awesome. Um, the awesome hair. She also comes with an extra um, headpiece, as you see, that, which comes with a little oh, flaming oh. eye that everybody knows of. And, it's purple because she's insane. Last time no, I saw it, I was explaining how, why I like figures, why yes. some figures, because this one just shows me that like I'm sitting in the scenes of that animal. Yeah, so it's like the level of detail is it's really intricate. Look, especially for a good smile um, figure, good smile really top notch stuff, but mm -hmm. they're not always fully detailed with some of their okay, things. Yep. But with this one, they've gone all Way, out. Yeah. So, as you can see, so yeah, she's should be amazing insane black rock shooter but yeah we'll just keep it insane black rock shooter awesome great hmm. perry black rock shooter was a crazy figure what else do you have for us today today i'm also going to show you sanya v lithia from strike witches bring it on and here she is in her box this is an altar figure um if you were to ask chaos anime what is your pretty much your favorite figures mm -hmm. maker yep. would say Alta. There's a lot of Otakus out there who probably won't like that because years ago they weren't that top notch, but I've got to say they kick it out yeah. of the ballpark Different story now. all the time. Yeah. Um, and here we go. We've got Sonya. She comes with um, two different body types Ooh. because in, in Strike Witches 2, she puts on a coat and hits a stratosphere with some jet boosters. Awesome. I'm sure you all know it if you've all seen it. So this is the box she comes in, and we'll have a quick look at her because um, 
everybody knows we're all about strike which is here, so she's already out. Great. This is a great looking strike which figure here, Perry. Give us some more information, please. This is an awesome strike which is figure. Um, I'm probably a bit biased because we're big strike which is fans here yeah. but, and Alter fans, but like I say, they get it right all the time. Here she is in a striker unit. Some people probably say it's from Strike which is one, but she's just using her propeller units. Her normal ones, we've got out the jet boosters on there. Um, as you can see, she's got her little radar antennas that she uses at night. And really, you don't mess with that weapon. That's almost as big as Homer's bazooka and a real <laughs> action hero. So, yeah, she also comes with, this is the great thing about this, and if you're a real big collector, you probably want to get two of them so you can actually have both of them. Here she comes with her Strike Witches 2 Getter, which is pretty much her in her, her coat, which everybody knows her from. And she flew out to the stratosphere with help from the other strike witches. Oh. This is what she was wearing. So yeah, and they've also got another skirt under there, which has been just awesome detail. <clears throat> you get a spare pair of um, witches' ears. Um, only reason because these ones have got holes, so you can put her radars in there. Here's her little rocket boosters. So with a few swips and swaps over there, you get her into strike witches two mode. Um, I haven't put her in this mode yet because in Australia it's. Um, sunny at the moment it's not really sunny but it's summer so you're not really wearing a coat in summer so we're going to put a coat on in winter and so at the moment we've got it like that but yeah just an awesome figure um yeah check it out on my website you'll love it great so perry what do you have here now before you go to japan the man i'm going to show you two little nendroids that's okay. they're the newest nendroids for us here um this is saber alter version now the difference between this nendroid and normal nendroid is this is a super movable version so her joints and in her knees which you can't see more they all move a bit like a figma comes with a few less parts than an android normally would come with but you really can't complain because one, it's Sabre, two, mm. she's in an alter state, and really, and that's it, eh? <laughs> um, also, I'm going to show you before we go, everybody's favourite little magical girl, <laughs> Madoka. Hello. Um, this is Madoka Nendroid in Mako version. Um, so, yeah, look, she's a bit of a, a special one. Um, she comes with a whole bunch of different parts, and so, yeah, check it out. She's on our website right now. That's that. Thanks awesome. for having me, Japan the Man. Great. Perry, thank you once again for your time. So everything you've seen here can be found on the Chaos Anime website. Uh, links will be provided below in the description. So yeah, we'll see you around, Perry. Thank you very much. Thanks, man. So this week we're reviewing Durarara. And this copy came to us from Siren Visual, so much thanks to the guys at Siren Visual for providing this review copy. Uh, this one is the first one, it's a part one of two, so it goes from episode one to 13, which is what I'm gonna be basing my review on. So first of all, I have to say that I actually quite liked it. Um, going into it, I wasn't quite sure of what to expect, but it's a really cool story. That, you know, it's basically about this boy, you know, schoolboy called uh, Mikado, who comes to live in Tokyo in uh, Ikebukuro with his friend. And there's basically a whole bunch of, um, I don't know, like say supernatural beings that interact with each other and uh, with the environment around them. It's, it's actually a quite unique story. Uh, Nick, what did you think of it? Well, like you said, it is a very unique story, sort of very multifaceted, um, somewhat like kind of pulp fiction kind of feel where you've got all the different stories sort of on their own and then they all intertwine mm. by the end and become this big massive thing. Now, I've actually seen the entire anime and I have to say I absolutely love this anime. It's up there in my top tier of all time favourite animes. Um, the character development is just amazing. The music is quirky and different and fun. And just everything about it, I have to say, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, personally, I'd have to say I'd give it five out of five kendos. Mm. See, I liked, um, I actually quite liked the, uh, I guess what I liked about it was the art style and the music throughout it is actually really good. I love the yeah. opening and the closing. Very awesome, music. yes. Very, very cool. Um, maybe because I haven't seen the full thing, so I can't actually see how it's going to work out. But for now, I guess I'd probably happily give it a four out of five kendos. Four out of five halfway through, five out of five for the whole thing. And with that, we come to the end of another show.
but next week we're joined by a special interstate guest. And we catch up with an amazing up and coming cosplayer. Don't forget you can always reach us on Facebook, Google+, Twitter and email. And if you've got something you'd like us to feature or if you'd like to be on the show, drop us a line. So until next time, I'm Japan Demand. And I'm Neko, signing off. Matane! So Perry, what else can we get from Chaos Anime? Well, funny you should ask that. Figma. Ooh. Why swask? English and Japanese editions. Awesome. Oh, some plushies. Oh, cute. Some messenger bags. Seba. Oh. Oh, and some pillows. Moi. Oof, this is a lot of stuff. So for all your otaku needs, go to chaosanime.com.au.